By now, everyone has heard Donald Trump is the first president in American history to be impeached twice. Now, I'm going to read this article from John Pavowitz, and you're going to understand why. He and the rest of his supporters need to be held responsible for what happened a week ago. Many of the faces were already familiar. We saw them in real time, smashing Capitol building windows, scaling walls, praying through the halls of Congress, beaming with self-satisfaction. We could see their every emotion as they desecrated monuments, urinated on carpets, and sat between lawn ma- behind lawmakers' offices as if winning something they have fought so very hard for, a treasure they have violently won after a long, brutal struggle. We saw their faces because they wanted us to see, wanted us to see them. This was not an insurrection. It was a live stream social media white fantasy. They chose their costumes with great care. Some ridiculous American caveman cosplay or, or patriot Pinterest outfit with, with a new hat that they made them, made them look, they thought that made them look cute for their selfies that captured them looting and destroying and damaging and insulting. Most of them didn't make an attempt to conceal their identities, a product of how emboldened they felt in this aggression, how unafraid they are of accountability as they were, and the story they told themselves about how righteous their imagined cause was as they committed a deadly act of collective terrorism against the very heart of American democracy. We saw their radiant Cheshire cat grins, their sweaty red-faced tirades, the snarling, disfigured fury as they, as they assaulted police officers and crushed one, in, one another into a crowded hallways on their way to what they believed was their true destiny, a grand revolution. But the question decent Americans are asking today is the same one we were asking on January 6th, the same one we've been asking since November of 2016. A revolution of what? What precisely were they overthrowing? What exactly what they were pro- what were they protesting? How specifically had this nation so grievously wronged them? As critical as those questions are, they're a fruitless endeavor because the truth of the matter is they would not be capable of a response. This was a nothing revolution, an empty display of cheap anger formed in the staggering privilege made up of fiction of fake oppression inflamed by a massive lie and directed toward a man who fully embodies them, one who has every who has had everything in his life handed to him and is perpetually outraged when he can't have more. As the story of these wannabe revolutionaries are being revealed, we are seeing the truth, that these were not the poor, rural whites that the media have been telling us they were, at the heart of this trash can despot's rabid base who blue voters need to understand. There were people wealthy enough to travel across the country on a whim after a year of economic despair. People with businesses and government jobs and private planes and huge sponsored social media platforms. These are not the downtrodden and misrepresented and vulnerable of our nation. Finally, rising up to fight the powers that be. They are the powers that be who can't recognize by attacking the system they were assaulting themselves. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. famously said that a riot is the language of the unheard. This is not that. These people have been heard since before, since before they were born, since the nation was first founded on genocide, erected by colonialism, built upon slavery, and maintained by systematic racism. They've always had a voice, 
always been catered to and never been marginalized in any true measure, which is why we are losing an election now feels like some horrible systematic wrong that is the last straw in the functional pile of injustices that they have to carry and could no longer. Their violence was not a desperate cry for justice. It was a spoiled toddler's tantrum with deadly consequences. I can't help but think that these fairy tale white patriots' great season of personal loss began when a black man was elected president 12 years ago, and that the mere reality of that man's existence, and the man I speak of is, of course, former President Barack Obama fully accelerated it all. Their rapid gun lust, their toxic religious apocalyptic, apocalypse visions, their rational fear of immigrants, and every defense mechanism against, doing, against America doing to them what they have been doing to America since, since they were born. It was a marvel to see the absolute most privileged humans walking the planet still manage to convince themselves that they are being oppressed, to be culpable for a murderous act of terrorism, and somehow be even more defiant a- after it. History will record and quantify the events of January 6, 2021, but it will tell an even different story than the one unplaying in the heads and the perpetrators and their disgraced, emotional, bankrupt white messiah, Donald John Trump. It will pass the judgment without prejudice. This was an empty insurrection. It was a hollow treason. It was a meaningless rebellion. It was a deadly, costly, nothing revolution. CTP, know the truth. God bless. Peace to the left. Justice to the right.